thank you all for coming. It's always good to see so many faces. I think when you put an event on like this, you worry that you're going to be looking at a bunch of empty chairs. So thank you for allowing me to sleep this evening. Um, I'm going to today kind of take a bit of a liberty and do a bit of a sales pitch for Alchemy, but really just explain what we are, who we are, why we are, and kind of how we're doing what we're doing with programmatic advertising. So without further ado, really, we are the decentralized ad platform. So for about three years now, we've been building a decentralized ad network. And I'll talk what about a decentralized ad exchange means in a little bit more, but we'll have to go through the presentation itself. But really, we're reducing um, the hops between advertisers and publishers with 100% transparency of all transactions between buyers and sellers. We have reduced fees. So we're allowing more media, more revenue if you're an advertiser or a publisher. And we have the lowest emissions that are currently available for an ad exchange. And again, I'll go into a lot more detail about all these points, but yeah, I wanted to start that off. And I think it's always very easy to say that we're trying to do right for the world, but it's easier to show you. And we were very pleased about three weeks ago to be awarded B Corp status. That took a year of filling forms out. I know Claire's been through a process and they ask a lot of questions, right? So yeah, we're really proud to say that we're a B Corp. It means we hold ourselves to very high social standards and environmental standards. And I really like trying to fight the good fight for how businesses should act and proceed in the future. And this is who we are. So there's a lot of photos here. There's now 48 people, which always terrifies me that three years ago there was three and now there's 48, which is kind of good, but also terrifying at the same time. We're based mostly in the UK, but we have an amazing team that's based out in India. We have some guys in Europe as well. So we are kind of decentralized technologically and also geographically, which I think is quite nice. And kind of the reason that we're here today is because of the application of blockchain to programmatic advertising. This was the CEO of WaveMaker in Turkey, and so this is 2018. So the IAB did a kind of review of blockchain technology its potential and application to solve a lot of the issues that are kind of rife in programmatic advertising. And I think at that time, the general consensus was it's not quite ready. Technology is not quite quick enough. Scalability is not going to work. But since then, that was now five years ago. We hadn't even heard of the word pandemic really before that point. But now we have, sadly. Um, but yeah, blockchain's come a long way. I think we're already starting to see some of the biggest brands in the world adopt blockchain. You have Starbucks, you have Nike, you have some of the, the biggest financial institutions now that are looking towards Bitcoin and Ethereum as great solutions for financial products, but also technologically for brands, for loyalty, you name it really. The potential for this technology has come a long, long way since this IAB study in 2018. And this is why we're here, really. We believe that the programmatic infrastructure is broken. This should be probably familiar to most of you in this room, but you kind of look at your advertiser and your publisher, there's a ton of hops in between, right? You have DSPs, DMPs, exchanges, ID providers, SSPs. Each of those have done a very good job of innovating. I'm not here to completely trash these guys. Like they've created this market for us, you know, but a lot of that innovation has been around formats, has been around targeting, but we're still using much of the same infrastructure that's existed for 10, 12, 15 years now. You know, like that we have need to look at fundamentally how ads are traded to help solve some of the issues here. And I wanted to highlight three key issues really that we're seeing at the moment. Programmatic tech fees are up to 47%. And this is not me saying this, this is a board called ISBA. ISBA is one of the oldest advertising bodies in the world. They work with some amazing brands like PepsiCo, Unilever, some great publishers, technology providers to really shine a light on what's going on in the supply chain. How can we as an industry improve that? So these stats are taken from there. It's not just us I'm trying to say that the thing we're trying to replace is broken. Um, just 5% of your ad spend is financially transparent. So, or rather 95%, you don't really know what's going on. And digital ads contribute to 3.5% of global greenhouse gases, which is more than the aviation industry, which is kind of nuts. I think it's when it's on the internet and you can't see it flying above your head, it makes it a little bit intangible, but really it's quite a significant impact for what are ultimately just digital ads online. So what I want to talk about first is the fee side of things. So again, my favorite diagram so far in the presentation, but these are some of the fees that have been taken by these providers. You have DSPs that are 9%, DMPs 7 this unknown delta in the middle, which is 17%. This is money they just don't know where it's gone. It's just disappeared, which I think is alarming given the attributable nature of programmatic advertising. 
ID providers, SSPs. So what that means, if you as an advertiser, you have a dollar, a publisher only receives 57% of that dollar. Or think of it another way that 43% of your media is not spent on money, rather, is not spent on media. And then conversely, your ad units are being undersold by 47%. So it's kind of leaning in some of those efficiencies that we're seeing. And one of the things that we wanted to do was reduce that. We believe that advertisers should get more media for their money and publishers should receive more revenue for the ads that they're selling. I think they are the parties, aside from kind of us, internet users that create value. You couldn't sell an ad if there wasn't any content that had been written by a journalist somewhere. You couldn't then kind of have any content that was funded if there weren't advertisers that were kind of preventing, preventing continuing the ad-funded internet. You know, like subscription models have been tried, but ultimately I think the best way to keep the internet free and open is to an ad-funded model. And the reason that we're able to make that possible is the Ads Explorer. So this is where it does get a little bit technological. I think us and some of the team at Alchemy are a very, very long way down the rabbit hole as far as blockchain and crypto is concerned. And this is, I guess, your invite to join us at the front of the rabbit hole. So I wanted to just explain a little bit how the Ads Explorer works. And that is really the secret source here. So the Ads Explorer is a distributed ledger. Um, someone wants to join. Uh, don't worry. No, don't worry. <laughs> Wouldn't be a presentation without a call, right? Um, someone dialing in with a question now. Anyway. Um, so a distributed ledger is a publicly available ledger of transactions that have taken place on a particular blockchain. At Alchemy, we've built one specifically built for ads. So we're able to see whether you won a bid, whether you lost a bid, the bid price, the ad unit, whether it was seen, whether it wasn't seen, what type of ad format it was, really everything that you'd expect, but it's being maintained by a network of distributed operators that are independent, that don't care where the ad was or who the ad was bought by. They just want to maintain a publicly open network to continue the ad-funded internet. All of this information is log level, so you can see, as I said, every single transaction in near real time. And you don't have to trust us, you can verify. This ledger is available publicly. Some of the information is kept private unless you're part of the transaction. We don't want to piss off the ICO because they have heavy fines. So it's GDPR compliant. We use OpenRTB, use Prebid, copper compliance, TCPA, kind of all of the rules that we need to be following are followed, but you can see exactly what's going on. That was quite tech heavy, so what I want to do is kind of just like simplify that a little bit and really explain what a ledger's doing, how, what a blockchain's got to do with it. So I've got a nice couple of graphics here that hopefully will explain that. That's an ad on the left, everyone. You can buy ads with Alchemy. People see the ad that was bought on a website, on an app, they hear it, they can see it on their connected TV. But that record of the ad is invisible. And what I mean by that is that it's kept in those kind of siloed servers that we saw on a few of those documents earlier, the diagrams earlier rather. All we do is use the blockchain to validate that transaction. We write that transaction to the ledger. So each transaction is then uniquely identifiable. Many people then buy ads through Alchemy Validators record each unique transaction onto the blockchain itself. It's about as simple as it gets. It's the challenges looking at me saying it's not that simple, but really that's what we're trying to say here is there is a very transparent ledger. You can see what happens. You can see how much money you spend. You can see how much revenue you've earned and really just get a better picture of what's going on. And when we think about that stat from earlier, that just 5% of ad spend is financially transparent, that becomes quite significant. We're going from 5% to 100%. And I think that 5% really is statistically insignificant. You know, like if someone said to you, okay, there's a 5% chance that you won't die. You'd be like, well, there's 95 chance I will. So that's a bad move for me. But I think there's some better examples. And again, our favorite study here at Alchemy is a 2022 report by ISBA. And what they did over a period of six months was look at 1.3 billion ad impressions. Of those through 1.3 billion, 61 million were trackable from buyer to seller. So not very many, you know, like quite an inconsequential amount of information. And I think, oh, well, I've got a couple examples that I'll talk through here that will really kind of hopefully drive that point home. But the first one is going to get you all involved. Has anyone here ever bought or rented a house? Like just quick show of hands if anyone's done that. 100% of you. Okay, nice. When you did that, did you 
look through the letterbox to see if the kitchen was big or the garden was south facing or you could fit your sofas in the living room. You didn't really. And that, in this example, is kind of having 5% of the information. What you need to do is go into your house. You know, you can see if your sofa will fit. You can see if your bed will fit upstairs. I think I'm the only outlier here. I actually moved house in the pandemic, so I didn't go into my flat before I rented it. And we had two red walls. And within two days, I was like, why am I so pissed off? And I think it's because I didn't quite realize how overbearing two red walls are, which you'll be happy to hear aren't red anymore. Yeah, although my brothers and Arsenal fans were very sad about that. Here's another example as well. I went shopping to Tesco's yesterday and I spent £9.45. And I got this receipt and it just had bananas on it. But I'd also bought milk, chocolate, apples, and my apples were off. So I wanted to go back and return those apples, but I saw the receipt and they're like, well, sir, there are no apples on your receipt. We don't know how you spent that. Did you spend it here? Was it in this shop? So day to day, you wouldn't expect to see something like that. That's what you'd expect. A complete record of everything that took place when you went to Tesco's to buy your groceries to cook your dinner that evening. And I think that is really what we're trying to change and contend with is the fact that you, everywhere else in your walk of life, you expect to see 100% of the information about what's going on. And really, that's all we're trying to do, is kind of give you as advertisers and publishers, a complete picture of what's going on. So you can make good decisions on how to better target your desired customers or make better decisions about the revenue you're looking to earn for particular ad units that you have on your site and just really give you the best chances to do a good job. Um, because I know everyone here works very, very hard. So now we know that low fees are good, transparency is good. My last point that I really had to make was around the emissions. As I say, Digital ads contribute to 3.5% of all of emissions. And we've got, I think, to just like contextualize that. Um, what we've done is used Ethereum, effectively. And that is a particular type of blockchain. It's kind of the most popular one outside of Bitcoin that has undergone some significant improvements recently. And to really, again, drive that home, we've taken the amount of energy that YouTube effectively uses and compared that to Mount Everest. I will say, in YouTube's defense, this isn't purely ad space. This is for all of their streaming, people visiting their websites, the kind of millions of hours of video content they have. But that uses the equivalent of one Mount Everest worth of energy. Ethereum's one RuPaul. So compared to our 8,848 meters, we have RuPaul at 1.93 meters. So you can see there, it's significantly less than just YouTube. My wife's absolutely buzzing that I've got RuPaul. I've watched so many episodes of the drag race. So she was <laughs> over the moon that it's made it into a presentation. And then alchemy is the equivalent of a queen bee. So that's based on the amount of transactions that we post for Ethereum's ledger. So we are 1.5 centimeters versus 8,838 meters worth of YouTube's Mount Everest. So yeah, really to round it off today and before we kind of have the panelists, which I know what you're all here for really, I think you're all sick of me selling to you now. Um, but yeah, Alchemy, I guess, reinvented the way that you can change ads now. We're using a blockchain, we have complete transparency, reduced fees and we've reduced the emissions. So yeah, thank you all for listening. I hope that was interesting and yeah, roll on the panelists. <laughs> <laughs>